Let's try another problem. A person stands at the edge of a cliff that is 15 meters above the ground. They throw an object straight up with initial speed of 3 meters per second. Find the velocity with which the object strikes the ground. A person stands at the edge of a cliff that is 15 meters above the ground. They throw an object straight up with initial speed of 3 meters per second. Find the velocity with which the object strikes the ground. Please copy that problem into your notes and then uh, try the problem. Uh, please uh, pause the video and don't proceed until you've already given the problem a shot on your own, trying to use the same notation and techniques that we've been developing in these videos. Well, the first thing we have to do is to try to draw a picture that will show the path of the object. Well, here we've started our picture. Uh, so here we have a person who's standing at the top of a cliff. Uh, I guess it's not a very high cliff. It's only 15 meters off the ground. Uh, so here's a person on the cliff. Uh, here's the cliff, and here's the ground down here. And this distance here is 15 meters. Uh, and now the person is going to throw the object straight up. So we want to show the path of the object. Well, here's the initial point. From the initial point, the object is going to go straight up uh, until it reaches a peak. And then the object will go down until it reaches the ground. Remember that we always want to label the initial and the final points. Well, the initial point is the height that the object was at when it was first thrown, which is the same height as the cliff. And then the final point is when it strikes the ground. So I'll label this point down here as F, and this point here as initial. And up here, we have the dashes for uh, the peak. Now, of course, the object is actually going to get thrown straight up from where the person is. Over here, I'm just putting the path a little bit off here to the right, so I have a little bit more room to write. Uh, now, of course, I guess, Maybe the person is not literally going to be throwing the object straight up, because if they really threw it straight up from where they were, the object probably wouldn't hit the ground. It would probably fall back down onto the cliff. So the way the question is worded, you have to think that maybe the person is leaning over the edge a little bit and throwing the object straight up, or maybe they're throwing it at a very slight angle so that when the object comes down, um, it's not going to hit the cliff. It's just going to hit the ground. So remember what the path looks like more realistically is something like this. This is a little bit more realistic picture of what the path is going to look like. Um, but we're going to put the upward and the downward paths a little bit off here to the right, just so that we have enough room to write on them. So again, this would be a more realistic picture of the path. But these are going to be more useful pictures to us, so that we have enough room to write our notations. So I'll erase this. Of course, the upward portion and the downward portion would really cover the same space, but I'm going to put the downward portion of the path a little bit to the right so it doesn't obscure the upward portion. We know that originally the object was thrown with a speed of 3 meters per second. So this speed here is 3 meters per second. Now I should get to start, start to get a little uncomfortable because I have a couple of numbers here that don't have signs. I didn't put a sign on this 15, I didn't put a sign on that 3. Well, hopefully um, you've worked through enough examples in the videos now that you're starting to get physically uncomfortable anytime you write down a number without a sign. So let's try to figure out the signs. Uh, well, we can't figure out the signs without choosing a positive direction. What should we choose as the positive direction in this problem? 
Well, I've been emphasizing that you're usually best off choosing the direction of motion as your positive direction. You usually want to choose the direction of motion as your positive direction. The problem is, though, that this object is moving both up and down. The object is moving both up and down. Um, so there's two different directions of motion. Uh, now, you might say that ultimately it's moving down. So you might say that ultimately it makes the most sense to choose down as the positive direction, because ultimately the object is going to be moving down. Um, however, I think that on the problem like this, where we're paying attention to both the upward and the downward portions of the movement, it's probably most intuitive to choose up as your positive direction. You can do it either way you like, uh, but if the object is moving up and down, and if we're really paying attention to both of those components, uh, it's probably, probably going to be best for us to choose up as our positive direction. I think that's going to be uh, less confusing. All right, so let's choose up as our positive direction. You could try the problem choosing down as the positive direction, but I think that would be a little bit more confusing. What's most important, though, is that when you choose your positive direction, you write it down. So what does this notation mean? It means that we're going to call the axis the y-axis, because it's vertical. And the arrow over here means that we've chosen up as the positive direction. If we were going to choose down as the positive direction, we would write it like this. This is how we would show that we've chosen down as the positive direction. And this is how we would show that we've chosen up as the positive direction. So I hope on every single problem that you're doing, you're always making an indication as to whether up or down is your positive direction. And this is the exact notation that I recommend using for that. Well, I'll erase this because, again, I said that on this problem, I think it will be more convenient to choose up as our positive direction. All right, well, now we can take care of that uncomfortable feeling that we were all feeling by going back and putting in our signs. Uh, let's start with this one. What should be the sign on this velocity? Well, that should be positive 3 because originally the object was moving up. Originally the object was moving up, so that should be positive 3. That's kind of the main reason why I think we should choose up as the positive direction. Uh, if we chose down as the positive direction, then the initial velocity would be negative 3. I think that would feel a little bit weird. So I think we're going to feel more comfortable if we choose up to be the positive direction. Now, how about this displacement? What's the sign on that displacement? Well, here's where it becomes very useful to have labeled the initial and the final points. Remember, this is the initial point, and this is the final point. So we know that we're being displaced 15 meters. But are we being displaced 15 meters up, or are we being displaced 15 meters down? Well, we're starting here on the cliff, and eventually the object is going to be displaced 15 meters down. So the displacement is negative 15 meters. The displacement is negative 15 meters. Maybe I won't put this arrow here to show that the displacement shows the direction that we're moving. So we're moving at uh, negative 15 meters because we're moving from this height down to here. So our total displacement is going to be negative 15 meters. Here's where it becomes very useful to have indicated the initial and the final points. Well, this is the portion of the problem that people are most likely to mess up. Uh, so I hope it's clear to you why this displacement should be negative 15 meters, because we're being displaced down. We're going down. We're starting on the cliff, and then we're moving down. But down is our negative direction. We've chosen up to be the positive direction, so if we're being displaced downward, that should be negative 15 meters. Okay, so that's a very important part of the problem right there. Okay, so now we've labeled um, our path. Here's the upward portion of the path. Here's the peak, and here's the downward portion of the path. Uh, the next step, step two, is to choose a positive direction if you haven't already done so, but we have already done so. Oh, well, but one thing we should do is indicate our velocity and acceleration vectors. That's really a part of step one. What was the velocity vector for the upward path? Well, for the upward path, we were moving up, so the acceleration was up. And what was the acceleration? Well, that should be easy. In projectile motion, on um, vertical projectile motion, the acceleration is always down because that's the acceleration that's coming from gravity. So here's the acceleration and the velocity for the upward path. And how about for the downward path? Well, now we're moving down, so the velocity is down. And the acceleration is always down. The acceleration is always down um, for vertical projectile motion. Uh, but when we're moving up, the velocity is up. And when we're moving down, the velocity is down. Uh, this is, again, a habit that I really hope that you're, you're um, getting into the habit of doing for every problem. When you draw your path, you should really be in the habit of drawing the velocity and the acceleration vectors uh, for that path. And if there's two different portions of the path, you might have two different um, sets of acceleration and velocity vectors. Um, so you want to draw each of those there. That's a really helpful um, part of our 
our systematic approach that I hope that you're using on every problem. Step three is to break things into components, but for one-dimensional motion, we can skip step three.